And uh, we're going to go directly on to our third speaker, John Lancaster, uh, whom I've known for so long that it's sort of beyond the span of memory. Uh, and uh, he's been active in the book world uh, in America for many decades. Uh, he and uh, his uh, wife, Ruth Mortimer, were exemplary editors of the papers of the Bibliographical Society of America. Uh, and John also brought to publication the massive project begun by Keith Maslin on uh, publishing the Bowyer uh, ledgers, the 18th century records of, uh, of an English printer, which is the biggest substantial group of original printing records for that period. John uh, is, keeps more than busy in what could be called requirement as USA May editor, and he will speak just about that, bringing American collections into May MEI. Thank you, Paul, and thanks also to Christina and her team, and to all of the American librarians with whom I've been pleased to uh, pleased and grateful to work with. I'm a little amused to be sharing a program with Eric Falk and Paul, beside whom I'm very much a novice in this area. As it happens, they are the three people from whom over the course of the past 10 years, I've learned more about Incanabula than from any other source, except of course from the books themselves. Although I'll be discussing the American contributions to May generally, a certain amount of personal reminiscence is inevitable. Uh, thanks to a chance combination of circumstances, I happen to have been the first to systematically contribute records from United States libraries. First from Smith College, then from Harvard's Houghton Library and the Harvard Law School, later from Princeton University, and earlier this year from the Huntington Library. To date, I've created approximately two-thirds of the roughly 2,100 U.S. records in May. However, I'm pleased to report that my fraction is steadily decreasing because other editors are actively adding more and more records. In the U.S., Christina Dondi first revealed plans for May in her Christeller Lecture at Columbia University in April 2009, titled the Venetian Book Trade in the 15th Century, Material Evidence for the Economic and Social History of the Renaissance. 2009 and 2010 saw the development and testing of May, and in 2011, creation of records began in Europe. But it was not until the middle of 2012 that the first regular contributions from the United States began, purely by an accident of timing. In retirement, beginning in 2008, I had been cataloging the rare book collection at Smith College in Northampton, Massachusetts, where my late wife, Ruth Mortimer, had been the curator, and for whom the Mortimer Rare Book Collection is now named. I had never worked with Incunabula before, and as I began describing in detail the 70 copies at Smith, including, of course, their provenance, I took several opportunities to learn more including a rare book school course with Paul Needham and Will Noel, a conference organized by Falk Eisermann in Greifswald, which also enabled a visit to the headquarters of the Gesamtkatalog, and the Oxford Conference on the Secularization of Monasteries in early 2012. It was at that conference that the decisive events took place. I met Christina, which led directly to the start of entering Smith's in Canabula into May, and I was recruited by William Stoneman to work on Harvard's collections. May, May activity in the U.S. picked up after a presentation and workshop organized by Christina at Columbia during Bibliography Week in 2015. This is a series of bookish events held in New York at the end of January every year. Following those events, the University of Iowa under Greg Prickman and Princeton University began contributing to May. A similar presentation in 2016 
saw the start of contributions from two New York libraries and one in California, by John McQuillan at the Morgan Library and Consuelo Dutschke and Alice Laforette at Columbia University, and by David Falls at the Bancroft Library of the University of California, Berkeley. Progress to date was then presented at a seminar in conjunction with the Searle meeting at Yale in April 2017. Since then, Yale University, the Grolier Club in New York, the University of Chicago, and most recently, the Huntington Library in San Marino, California, have joined in, and the Folger Shakespeare Library is poised to begin contributing with support from Searle. A further May workshop will be held in Baltimore in conjunction with the Rare Books and Manuscripts Conference in the summer of next year. May was, of course, designed with the aim of providing a broad picture of the movement of books in the early years of printing and of the wider consequences of the spread of the printed word in many fields. And that aim is well on its way to realization for which this conference provides tangible evidence. But for the repositories of Incunabula, and especially those with smaller collections, an immediate return on their investment in May is the making of new discoveries. Because creating a record in May entails close examination of each copy in ways not usually undertaken during the cataloging process in the past, such discoveries are almost inevitable. They range from identifying previously unrecognized provenance evidence to making connections with other collections, to identifying new incunable editions and suggestions for further research. Even the Smith College collection, numbering just 70 copies, contains one unicum, not an unknown edition, but a previous unidentified variant, probably documenting a separate issue. The Smith copy of Antonius de Raimundia, Libellus contra beneficiorum reservationes, printed in Paris by Guy Marchand about 1498, has what appears to be a canceled title leaf with the device of Jean Petit. All others have Marchand's device. The verso of the title leaf has been previously recorded either as blank or as having a woodcut illustration. But in the Smith copy, there is a blind impression of the illustration with a faint inking of the right border. And thanks to the growing number of digital facsimiles available on the internet, a copy at the Bibliothèque Mazarin with the Marchand device also has a similar blind impression. I had trained as a cataloger under James Walsh, whose monumental catalog of the Harvard 15th century books is well known, but I had never worked with Incunabula because Jim reserved those books to himself. When Bill Stoneman recruited me for the Harvard May project, his initial thought was that I could enter information into May directly from Walsh's catalog. But of course, I wanted to look at the books themselves. And as it turned out, there was good reason to do so, because in spite of the extent and detail of Jim's catalog, I've been able to augment or revise more than half of the entries I've worked on so far. Two discoveries stand out among the many. In a binding at the Harvard Law School, an end leaf is a half sheet of an octavo diurnal printed by Johann Snell at Lübeck circa 1480 to 1482. It may relate to other fragments at Rostock and Lübeck, but the text does not overlap, so it may also represent an otherwise unrecorded edition. And the Houghton Library copy of volume one of the works of Thomas Aquinas, printed by Michael Wenzer at Basel in 1486, was found to be the mate of a copy of Volume 2 at Würzburg. My discoveries at Princeton have not been quite as exciting, though those are very quite and much more so. This discovery connected with work on the binding by Scott Husey and provenance by Eric White, which Eric has documented in an essay on the Princeton Rare Book blog. I was able to identify the addition of another bit of printed waste in a binding, as that printed by Johann Scheffler in Ulm in 1500, of the Doctrinale of Alexander de Villa Dei, of which otherwise only a single incomplete copy of the Bayerische Staatsbibliothek is known. 
Scott QC's database of findings on Incunabula in a number of American collections is now available in its entirety on the Princeton website. Time does not permit an extensive discussion of this unusual discovery at the Huntington. Suffice to say that responses to a query on the invaluable discussion list Profaniens revealed that the elaborate arms are a complete fake, as is Herr Barfus, created about a century after the purported date of the inscription. Well, exploring the interest of individual copies is great fun, and not irrelevant to consideration of the future of May in the US. But let us return to the broader focus of May and how we might encourage and facilitate further contributions to May from a wide range of US libraries. The comments that follow owe much to conversations with curators and administrators, notably Steve Ferguson, Claudia Funke, Greg Prickman, Bill Stoneman, and Steve Tabor. Quickly, an overview of the holding in Incunabula holdings in the United States. There is a total of at least 53,000 Incunabula copies in U.S. libraries. About 60% of them are held by just 15 libraries. Expanding that to about 85 locations covers 90% of U.S. holdings. Viewing the situation from another angle, there are about half a million copies recorded by the design catalog. A little less than 10% of those are already in May, and of those, only about 2,000 copies, about half of 1% are in U.S. libraries, which hold a little more than 10% of the total number of incunable copies. I believe the way forward will have to be through collaboration. It might be possible for some collections to proceed independently, as the current contributors have already been doing since there was no other option up to now, but they too would certainly benefit from connection to a broader enterprise. Motivation will be of key importance, not for the librarians and scholars working with the books, but for the administrators, even if in some cases they are also librarians and scholars. It's true that an institution's standing will be enhanced as their holdings become better known to the international scholarly community, but that's probably not sufficient to convince many funding sources, whether for large or small collections in Canada. We will need to demonstrate that the process of contributing to May will also pay local dividends. There's a body of evidence already from the findings at Harvard and Princeton as well as in the smaller collections at Smith College and at the University of Iowa, about which you'll hear more tomorrow from Greg Prickman. The pilot project at the Huntington Library earlier this year was of particular interest because it was conducted in close collaboration with the rare book catalogers. And we can add one technical aspect of the catalogers' administration and administrators at all the libraries I've worked with have commented on namely the need for a more efficiently designed entry form for May records. It's possible that one of the larger collections might find it worthwhile to create a local entity of some sort, perhaps with a focus on 15th century studies, in which the impunable collection would play a major role. But more likely, U.S. May, my name for an organization created to stimulate further contributions to May, will be the product of collaboration among several institutions who can band together to secure grant funding. Whatever form U.S. May might take, it will have to take the initiative to reach out to other, mostly smaller collections, as well as supporting the work of the founding institutions. It will have to provide various forms of assistance, including documentation, some level of training and on-site visits, in some cases working alongside the local editors to create records, offering assistance via the internet and by email, both in the mechanics of record creation and in the identification of provenance from photographs. The cost to other institutions must be modest at most. And there need not be a single location for USMA. It could and perhaps should be a distributed enterprise with regional centers. 
a large permanent staff would not be needed, but rather a network of consulting editors. In my wildest fantasies, I envisioned flying squads of editors roaming the country to visit any institution within Canabula. I'm happy to report that Christina recently informed me that the first steps toward USMA are already being taken. There are plans for developing a core project, a collaboration among the 15th century book trade project at Oxford, Searle, and a group of American libraries that will support contribution to May throughout the U.S. We can all look forward to building on the foundation laid over the past several years and welcoming many more libraries, large and small, into May. Thank you. Thank you very much, John, and um, I'm going to just note the uh, wisdom of Christina Dondi, who knew that these three talks would be so lucid that there would be no need for questions at the end, because there would simply be a feeling of satisfaction. And so I think we move right on to a coffee break. Thank you.